Before joining the trial, there's a couple things we want to make sure you do in order to limit distractions or interruptions while you're in the trial. So first, find a quiet place so that you limit your background noise. We want you not to be distracted while the trial is going on, not to have things going on around you. You're obviously maybe in your home or in your office, so there may be other people around. So as much as possible, find a room and a space that will limit the amount of background noise and will limit the amount of distractions you have. Second, if you'll turn off all the notifications on your computer and cell phone, or close any applications that might have notifications or alerts while you're in trial, such as email. I know that when my emails open my desktop and I'm in a Zoom meeting, every time I get an email, there's a ding which interrupts the meeting if my microphone's on. So just make sure you're turning off those applications that would be sending you notifications as much as possible, or at least muting them so that you're not getting uh, buzzes or beeps or dings during the course of the trial. Third, silence your cell phone. We are or may need to communicate with you during the trial. We may be sending you emails that you could see on your cell phone, text messages, or even calling you. So don't turn your cell phone off and don't put it in a place where you can't see it. However, do turn it on silent so that it doesn't ring while the trial is going on. If your microphone happens to be on, then we wouldn't want that interrupting the trial or causing an issue. Now, odds are none of these will be problems for you because your mic should be muted for the entire trial for the most part, but these are just extra precautions we're taking in order to limit the amount of distractions that you experience, plus the amount of interruptions we have during the course of the trial. So the first thing you'll need to do is join the meeting. And we're going to send this meeting link to you in a couple different ways, but bottom line is you're going to have a meeting link that'll look something like this in an email. And so all you'll need to do is click on that meeting link and it'll open up Zoom on your desktop. Now you may have to download Zoom if you don't have it already, but if you do, once you click that link, it'll bring up a box that looks just like this. And we're gonna want you to have your video on when you first join the meeting so that the presiding judge can check you into the round and we'll be able to see that you were actually sitting in front of your computer ready to score the round. So all you need to do here is click join with video. Once you do that, you'll be taken to a waiting room. We're going to make sure we don't want to allow anybody in these rooms that doesn't belong. And so the presiding judge is going to be responsible for making sure that they admit anyone into the room that wants to get in. So you're going to be taken to a waiting room where you will be until the presiding judge lets you in. Now, this may take a minute. Just sit here because if you're coming in after another trial is taking place, that trial may run long or there may be an issue. And so we will have to take a little while before you get admitted to the meeting. We'll try to let you know if that's the situation, but if not, as long as it's on your screen, just sit and wait until the judge lets you in the room. The next thing you'll see once you've been admitted is a box like this, where it'll give you the choice to join with computer audio. That's what you wanna pick. That means all the audio that comes in or out will be through your computer. So all you have to do is, is click this blue box for join with computer audio. And now you're in the meeting. So now you're part of the meeting and you can participate in the trial as a scoring judge. Uh, and so you don't have to do anything else at this point. Uh, you're in the meeting and you'll be checked in. Once you join the call, then the judge, the first thing the judge will do once everybody's in the room is check them in. So you'll need to have your camera on and your microphone unmuted so the judge can check you into the room and make sure you're sitting there, that your microphone works and that everything's ready to proceed for the trial. Once that's happened, we're going to want all of the scoring judges to turn off their cameras and mute their microphones. And really, your camera's going to stay off and your microphone's going to stay muted for the entirety of the trial unless there's some kind of issue where you need to speak to the presiding judge or the presiding judge needs to speak with you. So how do you turn your camera off and mute your microphone? If you move your cursor on your screen at the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see two different icons appear. One will be a microphone with the word mute underneath it, and the other will be a camera with the word stop video underneath it. All you need to do here is click on those icons to turn them off. So, for example, if you want to turn off your camera, all you do is click on that icon, and you'll see a red slash through it. At this point, the camera's turned off, which means no one can see us on camera, no one can see us on their screen. And if you need to turn your camera back on at any point during the trial, for example, if you need to get the presiding judge's attention or let them know something, then all you need to do is click back on that camera icon and your video will come back on and that red slash will disappear. Same thing's true for the microphone. All you have to do is click on the microphone icon and you'll see that same red slash appear, which means your microphone has been muted. 
So we were, mute, we were muted. As soon as we click on that icon again, that unmutes us. So again, if at any point you need to speak to the presiding judge, then you can click on that icon and unmute yourself so you can speak to the presiding judge and let them know there's a problem. But again, during this trial, we really want the focus to be on the attorneys, the witness who's testifying, and the presiding judge. So we're going to have y'all mute your microphones and turn off your camera. And the only real reason you should ever unmute your microphone or turn on your camera is if there's some kind of issue you need to speak with the presiding judge about during the course of trial. Otherwise, you can leave those things off and there will never be a chance where you really need to do, turn those on or be on camera or be on microphone during the course of the trial. Once you've joined the call and once you've been checked in, you've turned off your camera and your microphone, uh, then the next thing we'll make sure you do is rename yourself so that everyone in the trial will know exactly who you are and what your role in that trial is. So you're a scoring judge. You're not the presiding judge. And we're not going to have jurors here. We're going to treat this like a bench trial because we want to make sure we limit the number of issues and juries become confusing in this kind of setting. So what we're going to have you do is rename yourself to indicate that you're a scoring judge. Now, to rename yourself, all you have to do is move your cursor over the box on your screen where you're, where you're located. Whether you're on camera or not, your name will show up whether you're on camera or not. So you'll know where you are. Right here at the bottom left, you see my name is Robert Little. So I want to change that. Well, in the upper right-hand corner of your box, you're going to see a little blue box with three white dots in it. Just click on that. That'll bring up a drop-down menu. On that menu, select Rename. When you do, it'll bring up this little box where your name appears, and you can change it to whatever you want. What we want to do is simply add dash SJ for scoring judge after your name. So your name will appear mine, Robert Little dash SJ. Then all you have to do is click this button that says rename. Now on your screen and for all the people in the call, they can see that your name is Robert Little dash SJ, which means you're a scoring judge. So now everybody knows who you are, what your name is, and what your role in the trial is. All right, so now we've gotten everybody checked in. We've gotten everybody who needs to be on camera on camera. Everybody who doesn't need to be camera uh, has their camera turned off and their microphone muted. So now we're ready for the trial to actually begin. Once Before we do that, you only really need to be able to see the people who you're evaluating, which means you only really need to be able to see the attorneys who are competing, any witness who's testifying, and the presiding judge, because the presiding judge will be making rulings and obviously moving the trial along. So those are really the only people you should be seeing on your screen during the trial. However, if you leave it up like this, as you can see, the scoring judge, John Doe, is still on my screen, even though his camera's off. So we want to do something about that and make sure the only people on our screen are the people whose cameras are on and who we need to hear. So we want to hide the non-video participants. How do we do that? All you need to do is move your cursor over anyone whose camera is off, their little box. And when you do that, again, you'll see this little blue box appear in the upper right-hand corner with three white dots. Just click on that. When you do, it'll bring up another drop-down menu. And this one, you want to click Hide Non-Video Participants. Once you do that, any non-video participant in the room, all of them, will disappear from your screen and be hidden from your view, which means the only people you'll see on screen are the people who are talking, who have their mics unmuted, who are part of the round, and the people that you're trying to score. So that's important in order to declutter your screen and make sure you're seeing the right things as big as you can. Now, if at any point you want to bring back up those non-video participants to be able to see where they are, there's a box at the top of your screen that says total non-video participants, in this case is one. You click on that and it'll bring up a drop-down menu and just click on show non-video participants and that'll bring back all the non-video participants onto your screen. So I just brought them back and I can see them now uh, if I, for some reason I needed to. But odds are, once you've clicked to hide the non-video participants, then you won't ever have to worry about bringing them back up on your screen. This is also important because this is how the presiding judge will know if there's a problem. Because if you turn on your camera and unmute your microphone during the trial to talk to the presiding judge, then you will suddenly appear on their screen when you weren't there before. Which means they will suddenly know that there's an issue and they need to talk to you and let you know or figure out what the problem is. Once the trial is ready to begin, there's a couple of different options you have in terms of what kind of view you're using during the course of the trial. Right now, we're in gallery view. And gallery view means that anybody who's on, in the call will appear on your screen at the same time. 
especially here, we haven't hidden the non-video participants. So even non-video callers will appear on your screen. So that means you'll kind of have this Brady Bunch effect, right? Everybody's in your screen in a little box and you can see them all at the same time. However, if you move your cursor in the top right-hand corner, there's a button that you can hit to turn on speaker view. When you turn on speaker view, whoever's talking in the room will appear in a much larger box in the middle of the screen and everyone else will appear in these smaller boxes at the top of your screen. Now, I'm not appearing in the middle box because I'm both talking and I'm in the meeting, but that's what would happen. So you would have a much bigger view of some one person, whoever's talking at the time, and much smaller view of everyone else in the meeting. I'm going to switch back to gallery view now. Here's the key. We're not going to tell you which view you have to use for any part of the trial. We would suggest that during pre-trial hearings and during direct and cross-examinations, you turn on gallery view because that way you'll be able to see both attorneys and the presiding judge and any witness that is testifying all in the same time at your on your screen, which means you'll be able to evaluate nonverbal reactions that the attorneys have. You'll be able to see what the, the uh, rulings the, object, the judge is making. You'll be able to see the witness and see how they're reacting in nonverbal manners all at the same time, all on your screen. And then we would suggest during openings and closings, you turn it to speaker view. And that way the attorney who's giving the opening or the closing will be in a much bigger box on your screen since they should probably be the only person speaking during those openings and closings unless there's an objection, which should be fairly rare. So those would be our suggestions during pretrial and directs and crosses, gallery view, during um, openings and closing, speaker view. But feel free to play around with it. Feel free to try it uh, different ways, see what you like. And really, it's ultimately up to you which view you're using during the course of the trial. Just make sure that you're seeing those competitors and you're able to effectively evaluate their advocacy in the round so you can score them once the round is complete. All right, the last thing you'll need to do once the round is completed is fill out your ballot. So for each round you're judging, you're going to get an email from us that looks like this. It's already going to have uh, all of the information included here. So round 1A, that means the first round, flight A. It says the courtroom number, courtroom 1. It says your name. Here, that would be my name, so name Judge Little. It'll have both the plaintiff's lawyer's name and the defense lawyer's name. And all you're going to have to do is fill out your ballot. And of course, our Top Gun ballot is very simple and is very straightforward. There are five different categories, and all you have to decide is who did better in each one of those categories. So once you're ready to fill out your ballot, all you need to do is hit reply, and then go down to the ballot and simply input your check marks just like you would in person. So plaintiff wins opening, defendant wins direct, defendant wins cross, plaintiff wins closing, and plaintiff did better on evidence objections. And then you simply Total up the X's in both columns and put those totals in this final box. So three checks for the plaintiff, put three, two for the defendant, put two. Then you come down here and you enter the winner. Now the winner is whoever has more of those X's, whoever won more of those categories. So here the winner would be the plaintiff and the plaintiff's name is right there. So you would just pipe that in, John Doe. Once you've done that, all you have to do is hit send and it'll come right back to us. There you go. I've now got it in my inbox and we can put it into our tournament software. Now, do not leave the room, your Zoom meeting room, until you've completed your ballot. We will let the presiding judge know once we have all of the ballots back from all of the scoring judges and then the presiding judge will release you all from that room so you can go on about your day. But please stay in the Zoom meeting till we confirm that we have all of your ballots. That way we can easily communicate with you if there's an issue with your ballot or something we don't fully understand about your ballot.